the Grave Digger, the most famous monster truck in the world. You know, monster trucks have been around for a long time, but only one truck name and only one driver have withstood the test of time. Is it because of that Grave Digger name? It could be. Is it because of the never say die attitude of the driver? Well, that's probably true too. Is it because of the unique body stylings, the panel truck, the paint schemes? That's all a part of it. But it's more than just that, because there is one fact without a doubt that over the course of monster truck racing history, this truck has taken some of the wildest rides ever. You know, from back in the days when it was just a truck with the name Grave Digger painted on the side to this unique machine that fans see today, the Grave Digger has always been pushed to the limits. In the beginning of my career, when I first started out, we started out mud bogging, and um, we started getting a lot of attention when the truck was really big, and I drove the truck wide open. You know, we started driving in, in mud pits, and, um, and everybody knew they were going to get a show. I was going to either rip something out of the truck, or the truck was going through the hole. So whenever it's like, you know, we had 100 mud boggers there, and people would kind of wander off, but whenever Gravedigger got ready to run, Everybody come running to the mud hole to watch me go, you know, and I knew they were coming to see me cut up and and it was just the, uh, you know, the big truck and the loud noise is really what drew the attention, that, um, you know, as far as the people, you know, checking out the truck and really following us really close. He did the, you know, the local mud bog and we, we went to every one of the, his races and it just excited us so much, you know, whenever he would win just those little local shows, you know. Dennis Anderson realized that with the power tracks and the super tracks and the tough tracks television shows that they viewed in the 1980s, he had a vehicle to now push the Grave Digger monster truck out to millions and millions of fans. And he took it seriously. Dennis raised the bar and took this monster truck to the limit, pushing it harder and harder. It seemed like sometimes Dennis was fixing the truck more than he was driving it. Even getting to qualify tonight after driving 800 miles is kind of disappointing that a little piece like this could stop my truck. but. Nevertheless, it did. You know, I came back into the pit here. We had a steering problem. We started ripping the cylinders apart. That wasn't it. We came back to the pump and found it. And it's so far along now that it's too late for us to even try to qualify. So we're going to be out tonight. The TV exposure was always important to, to me as well as all the other monster truck guys, too, because then it got, um, it got people that had never been trackside or been out to an event that if they were watching it on TV and they liked it, if they saw it on TV, when they came to the a racetrack or the domes to see us. There's a different story when you're trackside. TV to me never done the jumps and all the big obstacles justice on TV. But if the people liked it on TV, they darn sure love it if they came to a live event. And plus it was, you know, popularity, you know. It's like if you were wild and crazy on TV, fans always followed you, you know, and they always root for you. And I seem to be an under, underdog for a many a years out there, and the fans always rooted for me. It's because of TV. I guess the, the story that came behind the Gravedigger name was, you know, this old hillbilly that had a truck that, you know, thought he could go out there and run with the big boys, and, and uh, all he ever did was break down. And then becoming known, you know, he was, he was pretty wild behind the wheel. You know, you start seeing more and more on TV. We've got a couple of them here. This is Dennis Anderson, driver of the Grave Digger, an old panel truck. Which we weren't running a whole lot of TV series back then, but you know, you've seen him on TV and he, he got pretty wild. In the early days, every time we saw Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger, it was an experience. And you know, his interviews were as wild and unpredictable as his driving style. A lot of times we have to pack up from one show and travel a thousand miles. And it's, it's rough. I mean, it's not, it's not Disneyland out here. You can believe that. If he was racing side by side or in a single qualifying run, Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger were going to put the hammer down every time and show everybody what they were made of. Well, there was not so much sponsored competition. It was one on one, and uh, the people who competed against you were actually, you know, run what you brought. And uh, when Dennis was there, it was run what you brought. We always knew that when we raced Dennis, it was to the wood. It was always full throttle. You know, there was no trying to impress 
sponsors and this and that. It was just good old boys racing, and that's, that's the way we ran. About 84 is when I started driving the uh, Stomper for TNT Motorsports and ended up racing uh, quite a few times. Even here at the Louisville Motor Speedway, we had some uh, pretty good duels on the figure eight track and then uh, a lot of the state fairs. That would have been in Roanoke, Virginia at the Civic Center. I was in a final race with Dennis and he was running like he always does. He's, he always races hard and, and he was having trouble at the end of the track because his truck was, it was tripping the back end up pretty bad and uh, getting him up on his nose and he was having to use the whole floor. So I knew it was going to be a, a, a pretty wild race because I had all intentions of being ahead of him. and. And uh, we got to the end of the track, and of course Dennis was up on his front tires, and really there's nothing else you can do when you're on your front tires but get him the throttle. So he had to drive himself out of a situation that he was in, and we got tangled up, got together, and tore up a lot of stuff. But that, that's, that's part of racing. Well, the first time I heard about Gravedigger, we went out to Virginia for a race, and uh, there's a couple of unique things that happened at that race. That was the first race that Rod Litzow actually drove the race truck. Um, so we were all excited about that. This guy in this black panel truck uh, was there with the name Gravedigger on the side. And we looked at him as kind of a North Carolina guy come right out of the sticks type of thing, but uh, turned out to be a, a formidable opponent in the finals, or I believe it was the semifinals. He dropped an oil pump, and we wound up beating him uh, the first time we raced against him. All right, so these guys, though, are in the semifinals. Local favorite, Hero Grave Digger. That is Dennis Anderson up against the rookie driver, Rod Litzow, in the USA 1 machine, waiting for the green to go off right now as the two are lined up side by side. First round of semifinal action. Litzow trying to make a name for himself right out of the box, a little out of shape. Anderson takes advantage of it, Richards, and he's trying to leave him, and Litzow's in trouble. Anderson won't quit. He goes after him. Dennis Anderson is going to get the win over Rod Litzow in the USA 1 machine. Yeah, I think I just wasted my motor. I might have thrown a rod in it, and I've just, I, when I pulled up here, I noticed I lost oil pressure, so I'm out now. Back in like 88 or 89, when we first started doing the, the Louisville Motor Speedway racing the big figure eight, that was the longest track we had ever seen, not only in length, but I mean in time. It took us to get around there. Well, I think we were running turning times of uh, you know, 50 seconds up to 60 seconds. And uh, you know, it was a long track. Dennis, he had some wide, flat Firestone tires that would really hook up on that asphalt really hard. And you know, he could go into turns faster than anybody else. And uh, you know, he would hit that figure eight. The cars were sitting in the middle, and he would hit it wide open. And to, to go there and, and to beat him and to win some of his fans over, you know, it really made me feel proud, you know, for the Carolina Crusher team. Actually, any time that I raced a digger truck, I think I usually ended up the winner um, with all the showing off trucks. It was pretty consistent. I can remember one of them, Nashville, Tennessee, I believe, that uh, I ended up the winner there that night. It was me and Dennis in the finals. First time I ever heard of Grave Digger was probably in the mid 80s. You know, somebody told me there was a madman running around with this big four wheel drive truck that had big terror tires on it. And it was a panel van. You know, you heard it from here and there and everywhere else around the industry, but, you know, I really wasn't into monster trucks that much. But by God, we turned on television one day and there's this wild man called Grave Digger. And uh, they used, back then it was, you know, Army Armstrong was kind of helping them out and doing all the commentating for all the monster shows at that time. And, there was Dennis, you know, he was known for one or two runs and he was broke. But man, those couple of runs that he put down was really crazy. Well, I can remember exactly where I was when I met Dennis Anderson. And the first time I ever saw the Grave Digger, it wasn't a 1950 body style truck. It was an early model Ford, like a 48 or 49 Ford sedan delivery. We were at Raleigh, North Carolina. And this fella asked me about monster truck. He said, sir, I got a monster truck. I'd be interested in racing. And he said, I've done a lot of mud racing and everything, but I want to get over on the monster truck side of it. He did run that day, and as a matter of fact, one of the runs he made was one of the most fanatic people were just going crazy. Anderson goes out, makes a run, clips a telephone pole on his very first run, and from that moment on, the grave digger was writing his name on the wall, man, because everybody knew who he was. It was for the fans. It was, um, it was I just kind of pictured myself. I was sitting in the stands. This is what I'd want to see. I'd want to see some wild man come out, go crazy, rip the floor up jump this truck and just you know drive it on the on the ragged edge or the or the limits of no return and um i just kind of laid down what i wanted the fans you know what i pictured the fans should get or the fans would like to see and um 
and it really kind of worked. It started a crazy driving style, and it was a hard reputation to live up to, but hey, I set it, and I made the bed. I had to lay in it, and people loved it. You were beat. You knew you were beat, but why did you go back and finish that run? I do it for the crowd. You know, I mean, they're, they're here to see me launch that truck and drive it hard, and I knew I was going to be out and have to park it, so I'm going to give them something for the show. Dennis came to me one day, and he said, look, man, I'm making more money selling T-shirts than I am running a monster truck. He said, I keep breaking a monster truck. He said, we got to figure something out. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, put a light behind those red lights on the front of the truck. When you come in the arena and get ready to make a run, when you hit that switch and I see two red lights come on, I know that truck has got one good run in it, and that's it. And after that run, those feet, folks can go up to the grandstand, at the top of the grandstand, to the T-shirt place, and meet Dennis Anderson, the driver of the Gravedigger. Because when I see the red lights come on, I know you got one bonsai run, then it's time to sell t-shirts. We basically had one shirt, one hat to start with. Now, Gravedigger was back then and is still now the hottest monster truck on the circuit, or for that matter, in the world. We've come just full circle with the merchandise from two shirts to, you know, 75 items with, you know, light up lights, die cast toys, models. It's just turned into a merchandising phenomena. So there is definitely a huge fan base out there for Gravedigger, and bottom line is they love his merchandise. Team Gravedigger has become one of the most competitive trucks in the world. My truck has really gotten popular in the last couple of years because of my wild driving style. It's an old, unique truck. It's a different truck. And I'm an underdog coming up from the bottom, coming to the top quick. Well, we took Dennis serious. Not so much that he had all the money like the Bigfoot guys, because everybody else, you know, the, the Gary Porters, you know, the, the John Moores, all those, we were kind of doing out of our own pocket. And Dennis would come there with just things welded together, going from show to show, breaking, rolling over, smashed up. And uh, we knew that when he got there, even if he was handicapped, even if he was just a little limping, that he would give somebody a run. And, and, and we respected him for that. In Minnesota, and this was in the middle of winter, my brother, Steve Dane, was racing King Kong against Dennis Anderson and his Gravedigger, and TNT Motorsports was putting on the, the event. Here they go, gentlemen, King Kong Three is going against the Gravedigger. They got off with a start. Here they come. Look at the Gravedigger. Look at King Kong. There they go. There they go. Oh, I don't know. Oh, my word. All right. We got at the line, and I thought we were going to do good. I really did. And uh, Dennis beat us by about a half of a tire. And when I did successfully beat him, it was a fair and square run. And they had their big engine builder there and all that. I was totally stoked. That was a big, that was a big highlight in my career. All right, I did it. Beating Bigfoot fair and square on TV in St. Paul, Minnesota, the same one where I beat the Kong brothers. It was, a, um, and it came down to me, him and I in the finals with Bigfoot, and it was Rich Hoosier driving. Anything goes. Listen. It was great to beat that whole team with their team leader there, being Bob Chandler, and me being the old country boy with this pile of junk that I always considered myself having. Dennis Anderson, congratulations. Got to be, is it the biggest moment of your monster truck career? Yeah, it is. I finally beat Bigfoot, the Kong brothers, the whole nine yards. Now a newer truck and more television exposure were making the Grave Digger even more popular. Dennis felt the need to expand the operation. With more events and more demands, it was time. It was a big demand for us, and um, I actually didn't want to do it because I always just wanted to be Dennis Anderson in his grave digger truck. But it was a big demand for it, and there were several other promoters that put on shows at fairgrounds, domes, and coliseums, and we needed more than one truck for all of our fans.